Hello, you all, and we'll continue along chapter 12. This is a long chapter, so I separated it into two PowerPoints. So you have two separate PowerPoints for this, and this is sort of beginning the second part. And we'll talk about summation and recruitment to start with. So let's go back to that diagram where we compared what it looked like for an action potential as compared to what it looks like for a contraction of a muscle if you had one twitch and so it has a latent period a time where this action potential has been delivered but nothing happens and then there's the contraction phase and the relaxation phase and all this is going to take a whole lot longer than the action potential itself that only takes about two milliseconds so in reading this to you, I'm saying one action potential produces one twitch. So the twitch, remember, is a muscle twitch that is only really seen in a lab. And this is done when, again, they put an electrode on a muscle uh, of a frog and they see what happens. And there's a very quick contraction and relaxation in, you know, 100 milliseconds doesn't really happen in your body. We'll see how that is. I mean, it does, but in it, it's going to manifest in a different way, and I'll show you how. Remember also that the action potential takes much less time than the contraction, and that's really crucial because I can deliver one, and this is my outcome. But what if I could deliver more? And that's the crucial point here. So a single twitch does not produce maximum tension. What does that mean? It means that, I'm gonna go back to this slide, this amount of tension that I see on the y-axis of this graph, this amount of tech tension here, I'm gonna draw it. This is as how strongly you could actually contract. That's not the maximum tension that that muscle can achieve. It can achieve way more force. It can contract more. The sarcomere can slide more than it does in one single twitch. Okay, so here we're saying it's not going to, one single twitch is not going to lift these barbells. It's just not going to happen. You need much more than that. So how does it work when you want to create much more force in a muscle and you want to lift something that's extremely heavy? How does that work physiologically? Well, tension is going to increase with the frequency of the contraction. And how do you get a frequent contraction? You're going to have to deliver action potentials very frequently. So one action potential is not going to do it. It's going to create one twitch. We're going to need many more action potentials that are going to create many more twitches. So increasing the number of twitches will increase the tension. And that's important. Increasing the number of twitches is going to increase the tension. And I'll show that to you on a graph. But the way that that's going to happen is that the twitches must occur frequently enough for them to begin to overlap. So one particular twitch does not have the contraction phase and the relaxation phase. No, it doesn't get to relax entirely before it is stimulated again. So this is an example of it not happening very frequently. The triangle is the delivery of the action potential. I deliver an action potential, I, have, I get a contraction, I get a relaxation, I wait a while, and then I deliver again. And I get a contraction and a relaxation, it waits a while, and then I deliver again. The tension notice on all of these is exactly the same. I have X amount of tension that's created here. Okay, and that's all I can do. And you can't do any stronger than that. You can't create any more force than that. Unless, unless what you would do is deliver those action potentials more quickly. All or nothing is something that we refer to uh, when we talk about a single twitch. The tension created by a single isolated twitch is the same every time. And the question is, how do you produce more tension? So I drew that for you in the previous one with a line showing you that it's going to produce the same tension every time. And we don't want that. We want more. 
We want more strength to be able to lift the barbell over your head here. How do you do that? Notice here, you have the delivery of an action potential and it's going to create a twitch. But now, you've waited a little bit, you deliver a second one and it's starting to do its slowpoke thing until you decide that you're going to deliver another one more quickly. Remember, these take two milliseconds. So you could go boom, boom and deliver it more quickly. In that case, this one didn't have time to relax again. So by not having time to relax, it's going to piggyback on the other one. And notice here, the tension has already increased. So all I did was increase the frequency of the delivery of the action potential. What if we kept doing that? So if you kept doing that, you could potentially increase this tension even more. So we call this twitch summation, where the frequency of the stimulation increases so that the fiber does not have time to relax before the next twitch occurs. And why does it not have time? Think about the calcium. The calcium would have to be returned to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and then you get another action potential and then you release calcium and you attach it onto troponin and you do all those things and then you contract but if you could skip a step leave the calcium in there and re-stimulate then you've got this tension which is higher okay so the reason it doesn't relax the contraction takes too long as compared to the action potential so therefore, you could deliver many action potentials before that muscle gets to relax. The calcium released during that first impulse doesn't clear from the cytoplasm before that next impulse occurs. So does force increase? Yes, I showed you it increase. The more action potentials, the more calcium is released and then the more force is created. So you have to always look at the tension on the y-axis because tension equals force. It's how much force you can create in your muscle. Look what's happening here. I have delivered an AP, another, 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 and I'm doing it very quickly in milliseconds. I'm delivering it, boom, 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 boom. And what's gonna happen is it piggybacks, it piggybacks, it piggybacks, and it continues doing that. All this here is called summation. And that summation is gonna increase that tension, right? My tension has gotten bigger, more tension, more tension, but this can't go on forever. You can't have increased tension forever in your muscles. You're gonna reach a place where it is, you've reached maximum tension. That maximum tension reached with visible relaxation between these twitches, then it has a special name. Okay? I want to um, show you the sarcomere reminder. If you had one twitch, you would slide a tiny bit. Another Twitch, slide another little tiny bit and, and relax. But if you could slide, 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 slide and keep getting that sarcomere to continue to slide, it makes sense that you would increase force.